against Leicester. They lost 1-0 to Leicester. It was a penalty decided in this one by a former City player in Kelechi Inacho. Very late on in this game as well. OK, Nadam, I'm going to put this to you. No goals for Man City in this one, and I know you can't read too much into the community shield, but no goals in the Champions League final either. What does that tell you? Yeah, I'm not going to read into it. I'm not going to read into it too much. I think even when you look at the Man City team, I think that's the best side that was available right now based on fitness and things like that. But ultimately, when you look at the lineup, you're probably thinking maybe five players or so might be in City's best 11 at this moment. And I think the Champions League final, it was, it was a good few games ago for a lot of these people. I, I doubt that it's the, thing, the first thing that's in their mind. Whereas for this game, as I say, you had people getting the chance like Cole Palmer, who's a, who's a good player, somebody who could have a big future for the club. But, you know, come the start of the season or maybe in a couple of weeks' time, you're going to be seeing people like Kevin De Bruyne in there. So ultimately, like I say, I wouldn't read too much into it for City. I think in some ways it's positive that it could still create chances with a sort of mixed team. But all the big, all the big players for Man City are still to come back in. And it's not just one or two. We're talking about Kevin De Bruyne's, talking about people like Raheem Sterling's and so on, Phil Foden's, even Gabriel Jesus' people like that. So I wouldn't read too deeply into it. But if that's what you want to do, that's completely up to you, Kay. <laughs> Write them hey, off again. It's ESPN FC. Completely up to you. <laughs> it's ESPN FC. That's what we do best. Hey, talking about big players, Jack Grealish came on just past the hour mark in the Community <sighs> Shield. His first game as a Manchester City player. Everybody got their first look at him. Did you take anything away from his performance? And what have you made of his signing, Nadem? Uh, I, I can't really read too much into the performance. I think it was good to see him in the shirt, you know, something that people can get familiar with now. And he probably wanted to go out there and try and make a difference, but it just wasn't to be on this particular day. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty more from him going forward. Like he's only trained a couple of days with the team. But I think it's potentially a very, very good signing. I think uh, the fact that he's coming in as a high quality player, but with somebody who's got a very, very high ceiling, him from this point forward could take him to a whole new level and the point that I've been trying to make is that I don't think he's the best player at City right now but based on what he's got right at this moment in time he's got potential to become one of the best players for Man City and I think having a look around and seeing that everything doesn't have to run through him anymore I think it forces him to play in a slightly different manner and I think if he adds the talent that he's got to that new sort of level of understanding I think it's a great signing for City I think it's going to be very tough to pick a team on a week-to-week -week basis but ultimately if you are successful last season you shouldn't really expect to be able to win something going into the next if you just keep everything exactly the same so I think it's a big boost and he's one of the most exciting players in England and I think it'll draw more eyes and bring a lot of excitement to, uh, to the fans getting back in the stadium this season. Yeah undoubtedly how much will it help him having Pep Guardiola as his manager Adam? Yeah it'd be huge I think uh, most people whether they like Pep or not they can't necessarily they won't really agree, disagree with the fact that he's been a very very significant manager in recent history arguably one of the best and he's one of the best in terms of the fact that he makes most players if not all the players that he's with better I think when you look back at someone like Raheem Sterling when he first came in you know he Raheem was a good player and then all of a sudden for two three years he became a pivotal player for Man City who at the time were winning everything obviously barring the Champions League. So I think in Jack Grealish coming in, I think he'll raise, he'll raise his game, he'll make him understand the game in a totally different manner. And I've spoken to players who've played with Guardiola, who've played under Guardiola, and they say they almost have to relearn that he sees it so different to what they've been used to in the past. And I think for players like Grealish, who have a really high football in IQ, I think it's a match made in heaven. So I, I don't think at this moment I could have picked a better manager for him to, uh, to try and uh, improve under. Uh, so Grealish is in, Harry Kane. We don't yet know Shaka, obviously. We continue to follow this transfer story. We know that Pep Guardiola wants them, but he said, as we reported yesterday, that the club have to negotiate Tottenham Hotspur. And so far, they're having some trouble in that aspect. How important is it for City to get Kane for the season ahead? I think it's vital, and, and though City were, were missing a lot of players, as Nadam rightly pointed out, um, I, I, I think just by the way they play, you see how much a, a good number nine, a, a finisher like Harry Kane, will improve that. Um, as good as City were, you just felt that that's, that's the difference between them winning the Champions League and, and not, which continues to be, to be their, their holy grail. Players of, of Kane's quality don't come along often. They improve any team they, they go into, even if that team is as good as Manchester City. If, if Man City do complete this signing, 
I expect it will, it will go to the very last hours of the transfer window if they do. I, I just don't see how anybody gets the better of them domestically. Europe is another question. That's a, a higher hurdle. But in terms of the Premier League, again, so that will make about four and five years. I, I just don't see who gets the better of them. So let's say then, Shaka, you've got Lukaku going to Chelsea and Kane does go to City. Yeah, for you, it is absolutely title favourites for City. Yes, without question. The only thing that can, can unsettle City are, are themselves. And, and if they, they again go deep in the Champions League and, and somehow lose focus during that run, I know they didn't lose focus last season as, as, as they went to the final uh, and still won the Premier League. But they are their, uh, are, are their biggest enemy in, in, in that regard. If they keep their focus on the league, if they avoid key injuries, which is, is out of their hands, I just don't see who gets the better of them. Even talking about a Chelsea, a Chelsea side that, that uh, and certainly Thomas Tuchel, that beat Guardiola three times last season and have improved over the course of a season, I, I just don't see um, how they eclipse City. And what do you think about this, Nadim? Because obviously we saw Chelsea win in the Champions League last season. We saw good business from them last season. If Lukaku comes in, that's another summer of good business for them. Are Man City still favourites for you for the title, despite that? Um, you know, I'd have to say so. I think they've, they've brought in Grealish this year and they've still got a player base, which is still exceptional. But I think, as uh, Shaq is kind of alluding to there, I think if City do manage to get what he's called a good number nine, then that sort of changes the dynamic just that little bit more because last year City won it without having Sergio Aguero either playing or playing at his absolute best. And I think if they would have had that last year, then I think they probably would have won the league in a probably easier manner. So if they do manage to get that this season, I think one dimension which it adds, especially in someone like Kane, is the fact that they don't need to play well every single week because I've, I've experienced this myself when sometimes you're out in the field and you just know that there's somebody who can take a chance or make something happen out of nothing. You know, City predominantly will try and keep possession and control the game and things like this. But with people like Kane, it just takes a moment. And that's and it was the same with Aguero as well. It just takes a moment. You know, not every one of those 260 goals Aguero scored came in games where City were dominating, but a lot of those goals were vitally important at times when City maybe were on the back foot. So I think if City do manage to address that, then it just matches up to in terms of what Chelsea have done because Chelsea would be bringing in someone like Lukaku who can score something out of nothing and be really, really clinical. City do that as well, but they have the other pieces around it and the style of play and the understanding and the ability, as Shaka says, to, Shaka says, to like be approaching a season knowing if they win it this year, then they've won the league four years out of five. You know, that level of confidence and understanding is something which is very, very hard to lose and other teams you know, can only wish to really have that. And Manchester City title favourites with both of these two on today's ESPN FC and both will be joining me for extra time to answer your questions so make sure you stick around for that and make sure you always send your questions in if you would like to put them to our pundits. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube and for more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the ESPN app and for premium content and live streaming subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.